Eight citizens, including six pupils, are killed and 34 others are wounded in a booby-trapped car targeting schools in the town of Umeland. Um Prime Minister Halaki tells the Australian delegation that the state supporting terrorists will pay a high price. The first part of the sixth convoy of the European campaign of assistance to the victims of fanatic terrorism in Syria lands in the Damascus airport. Good afternoon. Welcome to a news bulletin. I'm Dania Nizam. Yesterday, Prime Minister Wael Halaki received the Australian delegation currently visiting Syria to show solidarity with it. He briefed the delegation on the war against Syria and expressed hope that the delegation would reveal the truth about events in Syria to their people and public opinion. He also asserted that some Western countries and Arab systems would pay a very high price for their support to the terrorists who shed Syrian blood. The terrorism which they supported would harm them. Prime Minister Al Halaki asserted that Syria has the sixth strongest army in the world. This motivated the plotters to try, through their terrorist tools, to weaken Syria's military structure. He pointed out that the Syrian army is fighting world terrorism that has come from 83 countries, from the extremist fanatics, including some Australians. He asserted that the Syrian economy proved its capacity to remain steadfast in the face of this war and the systematic sabotage that targeted all its institutions and infrastructure. Prime Minister Halaki expressed appreciation of the noble attitudes of the friendly Australian people and national parties, popular organizations, writers and polit politicians who stood by the Syrian people in their war against terrorism. The members of the delegation expressed regret for the existence of Australians within the terrorist gangs that shed Syrian blood. They also asserted their determination to reveal the truth of what they saw on the Syrian ground and their observation of the natural life which they saw in Damascus. They would also expose the false lies and fabricated claims of the suspicious defeat channels. The delegation also expressed appreciation of the sacrifices of the Syrian people and army in their resistance of terrorism. They considered these sacrifices an example to be followed by all free people in the world. The Australian delegation was also received by the Deputy Foreign Minister Dr. Faisal Maghdad who asserted the keenness of the Syrian leadership to contribute to the success of the Geneva II conference through finding the peaceful solution to the crisis. He pointed out that priority in this field would be combating terrorism. Professor Anderson, leader of the delegation, asserted that all Australians reject arming and sheltering terrorists because this would be against democracy and the rules of international law. Uh, uh, to show the solidarity of the Australian people and WikiLeaks party with the difficulties that Syria is, is, is having at the moment. I think that the uh, Syrian people and their courage are an example to the rest of the world and how to resist this plague of terrorism which is sweeping the Middle East and Central Asia. Uh, we'll continue to expose the truth to the Australian people and, and to our international audience. And uh, next year we will set up an office uh, in Damascus. The delegation also met the Minister of Higher Education, Dr. Malik Ali, who stressed the importance of Syrian communities abroad and their contribution to the development of scientific and cultural relations between Syria and all the countries of the world, acquainting them with Syria's humanitarian civilization, which respects brotherhood and fights terrorism.
first part of humanitarian assistance arrived in Damascus airport yesterday representing the European campaign of support to the people harmed by the terrorism of fanatic and extremist gangs. It included food, medical compounds and the necessary requirements to face the winter. The second part of the same convoy is expected to reach Beirut in the next few days, bringing more than 500 tons of assistance. The officials running this European campaign of assistance asserted that they faced many difficulties, but they were able to overcome these difficulties because of their determination to reach Damascus. Eight citizens, including six pupils, were killed and dozens were wounded in a terrorist explosion of a booby-trapped car targeting pupils in the town of Umlamd in the eastern countryside of Homs. A police source said the car was detonated while the pupils were in their school. He added that the explosion also led to the wounding of 34 citizens, most of them pupils and teachers. It also caused heavy material damage to the buildings and infrastructure of the schools. The terrorists attacked the residential quarter of Al Hamadaniya in Aleppo with mortar shells that led to the death of five citizens and the wounding of several others. The terrorists fired the mortar shells against houses, causing heavy material damage to several houses and vehicles. Within the context of the continuing terrorist crimes, the terrorists fired rockets on houses in Al Aziziyah quarter in Aleppo. This caused a large fire in a storehouse of food supplies and heavy material damage in a number of houses, but no human casualties were reported. A new evidence of Al Saud's role in spreading the Wahhabi way of thinking was revealed by a French woman who told the France press agency that her husband became a fanatic when he went to Saudi Arabia on a pilgrimage. The woman said that her husband abducted their 20-month-old daughter and went to Turkey. He called her to tell her that he would cross the Turkish border into Syria with the child in order to join the terrorists. The mother told the French authorities about these details and addressed a letter to President Hollande who promised to refer this case to the ministries of justice and foreign affairs to be studied. An armed terrorist group affiliated to Jabhat al-Nusra confessed to the assassination of Sheikh Mohammed Saeed Ramadan al buti at Al-Iman Mosque in Damascus after it was ordered by the leader of Jabhat al-Nusra. In their confessions yesterday broadcast by the Syrian TV, the terrorists said that after Sheikh al buti criticized Jabhat al-Nusra terrorist operations in Syria, we were ordered to kill him due to a fatwa by the legislative general official of Jabhat al-Nusra, nicknamed Abu Khadij al-Urduni. The terrorist group said that it, was, it, it had first planned to assassinate Sheikh al buti at al Hamidiyah Souq after he finished a Friday sermon at the Umayyad Mosque while his car passed across the Souq. The plan was changed after we got information that Sheikh al-Bouti addresses a religious lesson every Thursday at Iman Mosque, so the assassination took place at the mosque, the terrorists said. They also said that the plan of attacking Sheikh al-Bouti car by a person wearing an explosive belt was changed for fears that the car could be armored. The terrorists added that Jabhat al-Nusra did not adopt the assassination as it was strongly condemned and rejected by the Syrian people because the assassination targeted a religious figure and a big number of worshippers. On March 21st, a suicide bombing targeted Sheikh al Bouti while he was addressing a religious lesson at Al Iman Mosque. ALTC, Advanced Language Training Center, organized an activity under the title A Damascene Day. This event included information about the social activities of the Syrian community. And today we are at the ALTC Institute to have fun with an original Syrian day to remember our old cultural and our old habits to have fun here with everybody but at the first beginning I would like to welcome um, uh, with uh, Mrs. Anahid Kharbutli, uh, she's the director of the ALTC Institute. Mrs. Anahid, uh, I'd like to welcome Hi. you at the first. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Anahid, I'd like to ask you uh, about this event, about the Syrian Day here at the ALTC. Uh, usually, uh, with ALTC, usually we have about two or three events a year. 
So we had the first one, the big one, you've been there, and I announced that we're going to have the Syrian day soon, and this is it. So our Syrian day, uh, we talk about uh, Syrian culture, we're trying to have uh, Syrian food and many activities which uh, concerning this uh, event. And uh, everybody's invited here, it's for public. Uh, well, we um, invite our students, their family, their friends, and we open it for public. So they can come in and join us in this uh, great day. So they have fun, they, they see a uh, Syrian culture, and uh, they have um, the atmosphere. We spread our energy, positive energy in all, all over the place. So everybody is invited to the ALTC Institute to have fun with us. Uh, it's been very pleasure and uh, I really had fun. So don't waste your time and come here to join everybody for the happiness. It was me, Dan Imam. Uh, take care, everybody. Wish you all the happiness. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching us. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syrianline.sy. After the break, it's our economic and business news with Vani. Thank you for watching us again. God bless you and long live Syria. Good afternoon. The manager of receiving cotton center in Haseke emphasized that the center has received 31,545 tons during the current season, showing that the center has received all the sources from the agriculture directorate as 90% of the received amounts were covered and the rest was not covered due to the lack of storehouses. Three hundred and forty billion Syrian pounds were estimated by the Ministry of Industry about direct and indirect damages made by terrorism since the beginning of the crisis, as the private sector's damages were estimated at about two hundred and thirty two billion Syrian pounds and the public sector's at one hundred and eight billion Syrian pounds. Also, the ministry demanded all the establishments and their affiliates to continue implementing the projects, which were sixty percent implemented. The manager of the cement company said that the cement company of Hatra was able to raise its productivity by 25% per day, which led to producing about 150 tons a day, while the company's storage of manufactured cement reached 82,300 tons. A source in the Central Bank of Syria announced the issuance of new lists for some of the businessmen and companies which were being settled, as they have returned back the foreign currencies they had received before in order to finance fake imports. These pr procedures are being made weekly after the violating companies pay their financial obligations. Regarding this, restrictions against them will be cancelled. With this we conclude our news. Thank you for watching and goodbye.